so what do you think of the the three central relationships, especially with Noi, who she sort of has this fixation upon and uh, and spite towards her relationship with Danny Wagner? Well, yeah, and that, and that's that's another girl who I met in the art scene in Minneapolis, who then a year, year and a half later, ended up working at AT and T. And it's funny because you know uh, uh, there were some females that I'd known at work that I got had a brief fling with when I met months or a year or two later after work, she was the only one that I can recall where someone that I had had a brief fling with ended up working with me afterwards. And she she was kind of cold to me at work. But I remember because she was quote unquote Asian and, and Janelle is, is Korean, Noi is Filipino, or Fili she's a Filipina. And uh, in real life, I I didn't I didn't have sex with the Janelle version, uh, real life version, but I did have with the real life Noi version, and it's a uh, and and the Janelle character, the real life version, like this Janelle didn't like the Noi character because I guess she did know uh, or heard that that Danny had, uh, you know, uh, uh, done her, but you know Janelle is interesting in a sense too because. She clearly has a bizarre fixation on northern white Europeans. You know, Danny is is blonde and, and fair skinned. Uh, her husband, and then her later husband, she she her first husband and her second husband in the play. We find out that they're Nordic types. She ends up, as you mentioned, uh, probably with another Nordic type in a a, a motel room. Uh, that is, and it's interesting that you did go all the way back to my very first play there because uh, that 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 is interesting. She seems to have followed down the path, the sexual path at least, of, uh, of uh, what should we call uh, the Valerie Novello character. Yeah. And uh, uh, although in real life, from what I can tell, she, she probably is still married, uh, the Janelle character, and, and hopefully happily, happily so. Uh, and that, that's, that's an interesting thing because just as I mentioned, uh, for example, the uh, Aldo Vincetti character in the Vincetti Brothers I have him ending up becoming a drug addict and dying. You know, I, I showed you the real life version of Aldo Vincetti, fortunately, is still alive. Uh, he apparently was injured in 9 11, but he's still alive. So uh, the Janelle, the, the real life version of Janelle seems to have ended up happier than my fictive Janelle version. But, you know, my fictive Janelle version needs to, uh, you know, have her come up in, in a sense. Uh. Janelle, too, uh, she used some lines from Eleanor Rigby after she has this male encounter, but the difference between Janelle and Valerie is Valerie, for whatever it's worth, seems to be satisfied with her her uh, warped place in life, having hookups here and there, or at least it has gotten to the point of apathy. Um, whereas Janelle does seem as if she seeks more. Uh, and this is why she looks longingly upon Danny Wagner, whereas Valerie never had a Danny. Uh, but I, but I did, th but I also think that if I recall, uh, you know, I think the Valerie character seems to be a nicer person. Yes, she had this past where she was diddled by the father of, you know, her, uh, her, uh, what you call her, uh, uh, her, uh, her best friend or her the, the girl. The Megan character when she was a child that she babysat. Uh, the Janelle character comes off a bit more shrill. She's not nearly as shrill as Emmy or Barbara Herzog, or and she's not as cynical and and warped as some of the other characters like the Mel Hardenberger character. But there's something definitely wrong with her. Well, her, Janelle is more manipulative too. Yeah. Um, in the arguments with Danny, uh, she is looking for ways to sort of spin. The wrong upon Danny, as if he yeah. has a hatred for women, rather than the, the main cross being, and it all, it all gets back to that. Danny makes sure that he, she can't move the goalpost away from it. Yeah. Is that she was trying to film them having sex, and for what, her own pleasure, for <laughs> disseminating upon the early interview. Yeah. And she was going to do it against his will without him knowing. Yeah, and and, and I think and, I think you know, the, not to you know, get sexes, but. I've known women, I've known men, they do argue like this. It does, it does uh, come down to this crux sometimes where women sort of sort of divert the conversation and men become more centralized in their conversation. 
Yeah, well, and, and but the point, it's interesting, too, because this was written just a couple of months ago, uh, right at the tail end of the, the Me Too thing of the late 2017. Uh, and But it's a good example that shows, uh, not that I really felt, quote-unquote, victimized or whatnot, but Danny has an absolute right to feel like he was manipulated and, and tricked and whatnot. And she tries to get out of it by claiming because she's Korean that uh, that uh, Danny holds that against her, that because she has uh, fetishes, Danny is somehow bigoted against her for being a fetishist, that because, you know, maybe it's uh, her ex-husband or, or this. Uh, uh, Janelle is, is trying to wheedle out of the fact she's blaming her actions on her ex-husband, on Danny, on, on this, that, and the other thing. When Danny keeps saying no, it's because it's not because you have yellow skin. It's not because you, you know, a fetishist or whatnot. It's because you wanted to film me against my will without telling me. And and you know that it. it the, the interesting thing is this is again that's if, if you wanted to talk about it, this play isn't about a sexual fetishist. It's not about the men versus women. It's a character study of there is something wrong with Janelle. It. To be reductive, someone would say, well, she probably was sexually abused in her past, but we don't really have anything like that. She could just be someone who is uh, a narcissistic, uh, self-absorbed person. Um, too often what happens in modern life is when someone does something or has something uh, like this that's just bizarre, uh, people try to find excuses for it, that they were abused or that they were this or that or the other thing, you know. Uh, and we we don't know, we have really, I, I don't recall in the play, you you probably skimmed it more, more closely than I have in, the, in, in, in recent vintage, but I don't think I put anything that really gives any idea that Janelle was abused in her marriage, that Janelle was sexually abused as a child, uh, there's well, just your, your plays are usually anti-victimization. Yeah, know, the the world seems to be going the opposite way. Yeah, Janelle is responsible. You know, Janelle wanted to have a. You know, who knows? She probably had in real life and in this play. She probably has secreted away half a dozen uh, lovers filmed in various sexual encounters. Prop some consenting wise, some not. Um, I Danny even mentions. And I, I may do a play on this. Dan even mentions an incident that I did refer to in True Life about this gal, this fat gal who drugged me and then filleted me while I was laid out on uh, a concrete basement floor. And and he uses that as a comparison to her. And she's like, I would never do that. And while, while drugging someone, slipping them a Mickey is certainly a greater offense than surreptitiously filming them with sex. It's the same similar type of violation. It's just a matter of degree. And Janelle doesn't get that. 